All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Attract Well Office Hours. And Coach Ashley today joined by founder of Attract Well, Greg Kilwine. Hello. Hey, hey, everybody. Excited to have you here today. As you're coming in, let us know where you are coming in from, where in the world are you? Uh, we're thrilled to have you here today. Uh, this is a follow-up to last week's training where we talked about um, where we talked about discovery call funnels. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing with you guys today a resource uh, that I have, I don't want to say created, it's really been something that's just sort of organically evolved over many years of having discovery calls and booking high ticket coaching uh, that I've sort of created a framework uh, that I follow and that I've taught uh, and that sales teams have learned and followed and all of that kind of stuff. So today we're really going to be focusing in on the conversation that you have with a prospective client that would then have them say yes, if this is a fit for them. This is gonna be really good for you if you are a coach selling one-on-one -on -one services, if you have high ticket group services uh, or, or programs that you offer. This is also an excellent flow to use for network marketers or anyone who has a business opportunity. So there's quite a bit of flexibility here. It was originally built around selling high ticket group coaching, uh, but I think all of the use cases that we've talked about here today are perfect, um, per perfect sort of iterative uh, ways to use this. Uh, just a quick uh, show of hands here for those of us who are here today live. How many of you already have access to the Client Funnel Challenge course inside of Attract Well? Because I see some familiar faces here, uh, but I, I always get notifications when somebody comments and like says something inside of the course. So I know that I've seen some of you guys in there. We are going to be talking about that today. Uh, and just so you know, uh, this is a thing that is free that you get access to. It's going to show you ways that you can use uh, the Client Funnel Challenge uh, uh, assets inside of your own Attractwell system. If you are a good oiling user, you can use those as well. Uh, the resource bundles work the same. The strategy is essentially the same. So uh, so yeah, today, uh, following up as well, uh, one more question for you guys. How many of you have a, um, a discovery call intake system in place? How many of you are using discovery calls currently right now uh, to take people who are interested uh, to becoming a new client or customer for you? Just a quick show of hands. Are you using discovery calls? Are you getting on calls with people to help walk them through the process of whether or not they're a fit for what you offer. Awesome, we've got some, we've got some yes, we've got some no, perfect. So this is just again to, 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 to reiterate, this is a follow-up to having a discovery call system in place. Uh, because really what you want to be able to do before you get onto a discovery call with someone is to set the right tone and the right posture. Now, we do that before you ever get on the phone with somebody, uh, and you are perfectly equipped without ever having to think about, oh, I need to assume posture. Posture creates itself uh, if you have the right circumstances leading into it. So let's do just a quick refresher here, and I'll show you guys. I do teach you how to build a thing that does this in the Client Funnel Challenge, but I'm going to show you an example, just an isolated one, of a, um, of a call booking funnel. And this is so handy, Greg, because you literally just shared this in our Slack. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this is a page where people can apply for a call with me. This is for a very specific coaching um, offering that we have through another platform that we run that's specifically for a very specific type of business owner. Uh, so that person, I'm letting them know, you know, it's time for them to have a game plan for growth. We're going to get a game plan together for them on a call. And the posture comes in, you guys, because I use this word right here apply. So it may be the case sometimes that someone applies based on the criteria in this form here. And I can tell from what's here in the form, their responses on this form, that what I'm ultimately offering might not actually be for them yet, right? So that's that's why um, there's a couple of reasons you want to say apply. Uh, number one is is because you do want people to take the call, the time with you seriously. Uh, but second and most importantly, you want to honor your time and theirs. Uh, so going back to the training from last week, do make sure that you've got some solid questions in here that indicate the kind of criteria that you're looking for in a client. So for instance, if you are um, 
if you are working with businesses, uh, you want to know what their budget is, right? If you if you provide, so like Melissa is a VA, uh, if Melissa is providing services and she wants to do an intake call to see if a client might be, or someone might be the right fit to be her client, uh, she's going to want to know uh, what their next business goal is, uh, where they are right now, what are the metrics, is it number of clients, is it number of leads, uh, you know, what is the goal specifically, but then you're going to have to ask a really important question about budget, uh, because you need to be able to compare what the, uh, the expectations they have are to uh, what they actually say that they're prepared to pay, right? So, th and that's just one example. So make sure that you are setting your, like pre-call, you are setting them up to take your time seriously and uh, for you to have questions answered so that you know that this is someone uh, who you should have this conversation with. And I'll, I'll add one, one more thing to this. And I think this is important for you to really put your cap on and think about you working at scale, right? I don't want you to just think about you having this conversation. I want you to think about what it might cost your business in the future to hire someone on an hourly or commission basis to run calls like these for you. If the, if the criteria are there and someone looks like a great lead on paper, that is a good use of your time to pay someone to hold this call for you. But if it's a, oh, but maybe, you might wanna start looking at how you can offer something different, offer something in lieu of a call, that kind of thing. Just kind of plug, plug that in. You might not need to be thinking about that just yet, but I want you to be prepared <clears throat> to take that mindset and that approach into the future. Always be thinking about the growth that you want. All right. So going into that booking funnel, of course, on the next page, they're going to actually, uh, you know, see that they can get a link to book time on my calendar. If it turns out that they're not the right fit, I can, of course, send a quick email and say, hey, you know what, I was looking over uh, what you had uh, applied for. And, uh, you know, I think that this is going to be a better fit for you once you reach this stage. Um, how about we keep in touch? Here's a free thing you can use to help you get there, right? All right. So once we have someone uh, who have filled out a form like the one I just showed you, uh, they have scheduled a time on your calendar, like we show you uh, in the uh, in the client funnel challenge. So someone can book a call with you. Then what you want to do is come to your call prepared, right? You need to be able to know where they're coming from, not be redundant, and to be able to be emotionally and mentally fully present, right? So you read over their notes inside of your contact manager and get oiling. If someone is filled out, I'm sorry, in a, in a track 12, I was just on the get oiling page, uh, in a track 12, somebody fills out that form on their contact card under past actions, you're going to see the whole readout of every question that they answered. Uh, you should definitely be asking them questions that might include uh, asking them for a link to their social right? In a lot of cases, uh, it's just a valuable thing for you to include. So you can go and look them up. And if you don't ask for that, you don't feel like it's relevant enough, use the email address that they provided or their name and whatever uh, other details that they've given you. Uh, and, and do a little bit of preliminary research, see if they've got a LinkedIn, a Facebook or whatever, and get a little bit of an idea of who this person is, uh, so that you can go in with greater rapport, uh, and feel a little bit more confident in your understanding of a person uh, before you have the chance to have this call. Now, uh, from there, I want you to use the conversation flow framework, all uh, right? So there's a discovery call framework that I have for you inside of the attract well, um, the uh, client funnel challenge in attract well. It is in the fourth module. So I want to show you guys what that is. If you go to, I'm going to put this in the chat right now. This is attractwell.com forward slash CFC, right? This is where you can go. You can fill that form out on that page. It is free and you will get access to this. Now I'm gonna show you where you find this inside of Attractwell once I log in here. Hold on just a second. I did it, okay, cool, here. Okay, so here is the client funnel challenge. You'll see the modules are right here. And down here, the discovery call. It's in your week three launcher funnel. So you will see there is, I do give a lengthy training here is 35 minutes uh, or 34 and a half. Uh, we do have follow up plans, a resource bundle for you here on this page. Um, but here is the discovery call flow framework. So I want to talk through this with you guys. 
So you can use this call flow as a guide to convert your leads, right? To move them into what it is that you're offering. So I've color coded this. I want you to notice this first. We've got a nice yellow here at the start. Then we're moving into green. Those of you who know the, the personality colors, this might start to feel a little logical for you here soon. Um, then we've got red. And then going to yellow and green. This is also, you could think about this a little bit of, as like, um, I don't know that I want to call it a stoplight. It's not a perfect metaphor, but anyway, um, I'm not perfect with metaphors. So what we do here in the beginning, I'm sorry, Linda, if you can't, um, they're very subtle for what it's worth. Um, right here in the beginning, I have this on, oops, yellow, go back. Here we go. So when we're getting started, uh, we are establishing a connection. Uh, so the yellow is really, this is sunshine. This is happy. Yellow, you have a smile on your face, right? This is um, a sunny day, right? So we're welcoming them. So we're positioning the call qualification process. So acknowledging that they have applied for a call with you. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you. And then you want to acknowledge them positively, right? So I noticed that you've been trying, you've been doing this, right? Or, you know, checked out the website you shared with me. I see that you're, you're doing this, that, or the other thing. Acknowledge them positively. See them and let them know that they're seen. And then engage them. What made you decide to take the time to talk with me today? And listen to the words that they say. Don't think about what you want to say. Listen to what they say. Because the words that they say to you right here are going to help guide the rest of this conversation. They have something on their heart today. It, it might not have come out perfectly in that call form, in that application form. You could certainly reference some of what's there, right? but don't let that overshadow what they are present with on this call right now. If you are not emotionally present with your person, you're gonna establish a disconnect from the start and this is not going to go the way uh, that either of you need it to, to really feel out and explore whether or not this is the person, uh, this person needs the thing that you're offering, right? So, um, so we ask this question, we listen closely and then we acknowledge them, right? We're going to look into that, right? So let them know, I hear you. We're going to talk about that on our call today. Now, you know, there's a bunch of other things you're going to talk about, right? You're going to be positioning your program, you're offering all of that here on the call, but um, do make note. We're going to, I, 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 we will address this thing that you've just brought up because I've just told you why they're there, right? So don't leave this piece out. Now we're going to set an intention. There is a wonderful thing you can do, especially if you are a coach or if you uh, work in energy healing, or even if you're just someone who is into that kind of thing and your ideal person's got a little woo-woo in them too. I love having guided meditations at the start of calls like this. I've done this for business coaching. We've done this for, uh, for wellness coaching. This works across the board. So you can actually, instead of just saying, I'd like to set an intention for us today, you could also say, I'd love to open our session today with a little guided meditation. Would you, would you be open to that? And if they, eh, if they're eh about it, then definitely check in on how you are attracting your people and what, in your, what you're putting out into the world, if that's the vibe you're trying to share with folks. Otherwise, do this. Just basically let them know. So on our call today, um, we're going to be taking a look at this thing that you said that you were interested in and in, in trying to figure out and also see what's kind of going on in your business right now. I will then give you insight into the next most strategic step that you can take. that will give you the biggest leap forward with whatever their, try their goal is right? Uh, or very specifically as well, if they said, here's why I'm here today, insert that here. And then you say, this is where we, this is where they know that there could be an ask, right? There could be a sell. At the end of our time together, if I feel like I can help you further, I'll let you know what might be a good fit and offer you an incentive if you're ready to move forward with it. Does that sound good? Always make this a question. Good with that? They say, yes, you move forward. Get yeses throughout these calls. All right, so then you can set expectations, right? Here, I'm, I'm gonna be asking you some questions. You might not have considered some of these before, so just give yourself the space to, uh, to really allow yourself to be present and let whatever comes through, come through. Um, what we talk about here is confidential. Now, then confirm, do you have the next hour set aside to give yourself this time? This is a very important question, especially 
And I, please listen, this is from experience. We used to run people through calls like this who came from Facebook traffic. Right? These are not people who were our friends. These were people who had businesses who signed up to speak to an expert on a call. Uh, we set it as an hour. Maybe they're not paying attention. They may be a rude person who's like, I just want to know whatever it is that you have and what you charge. Well, that's not going to be probably a good client fit for you, especially if you're going high ticket. You don't want to sell that way because those are also going to be the people who uh, could cause you some headaches down the road. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> so use this process, make sure you confirm, have you set the next hour aside? Uh, if you're doing an hour long call, uh, maybe shorter or longer, depending on what we uncover. If they say, no, I have not stop schedule the call for another time. You need to have all of this space available because especially, especially if you're getting into high ticket or high commitment, you must be thorough in this process right? You can have one call closed circumstances where you get on a call with someone for the first time and you sell something that's worth $10,000. That is this kind of flow that we're working through here today. You can also go through a full consultation and recruit your best business builder ever. Who's not going to deal with, uh, you know, the same kind of, uh, excuses and bumps in the road that you might've dealt with previously with folks who say they're going to do one thing and that maybe they don't. Right. So anyway, go through that. Remember we're still, this is still bright sunshiny. This is we are shining the light here. We're yellow. This is friendly. This is friendly section. Very friendly. We're never not friendly, but we're extra friendly. Okay. Um, so there we go. There's where we can uh, open with a brief meditation. Now we want to put the paintbrush in their hand. At this point, we are giving them the opportunity to tell me, what do you want? Tell me what you want life to look like. What does it smell like? What does it taste like? What's the figure in your bank account? What do you want? Is it 20 pounds lighter? What size are your jeans? Where are you going in your new body? Whatever the outcome is, right? Are we following? Is this making sense, you guys? We've opened up. We've made friends. We are connecting, right? We're listening. We're connecting. Now we're getting into, now please tell me, especially if you opened with a guided meditation from this place that we've just opened up together. What do you want your business to look like? What do you want your life to look like? right? Whatever your outcome is, listen closely to what they say, acknowledge what they're saying, repeat it back to them. And then you say, when you are experiencing this thing that they just said, how would that feel? What would you enjoy most about it? What would a day look like for you when things are different? What's important about that to you? What will having that do for you? And what do you think the bigger implication will be if your life could change as a result of this? What would be different when all of that's happening for you? We are hope and possibility right now. And then have them go ahead and draw out the details, right? So if they have a business, uh, does that mean new clients for their business? Does that mean new units of sale for their business? Uh, if it's in their being and you are offering coaching, uh, is this at, your relationships are different? How? Tell me what that means, right? Does this mean that you're going on uh, two date nights uh, a week with your husband, right? Does this mean you're getting three dates a week because you're a dating coach? What does that look like for you? Get specific in the metrics. And then you ask them, and this is important for your work together. What do you, ex what do you want to be seeing a month from now, a year from now, six months from now, be thinking about the time frame of your program, right? Uh, and then what does that look like right now? So, you know, if you want this thing, what are you getting right now? If you want to be seeing six clients a week, how many are you seeing right now? And now remember, we're not getting into green details yet. We are saying, okay, so this is what you want. Great. That's fine. Here's what you have. Okay, cool. Right. Don't be like, oh, I'm sorry. That's not working. Don't do that yet. Uh, be with the positive. And what we're going to say here is, okay, we're going to, so basically what we need to do is get this done and that done. Right. Okay. No big deal. Right. So basically what we need to do, if you're only getting, you know, two clients a week, or you're only losing a pound a month. Okay. Well, we just need to double that and then double it again. Okay. Cool. Right. Anything else do you want to see that you want to see happening? Right. Let me know what else, what else is there. And then there's some final rapport building here. What's the reason that they want this, right? You could open up earlier in the call with this. Sometimes that makes sense, especially if you are, you know, it, it feels like things aren't really gelling and you need to open up rapport a little more. You could ask this question earlier in the call. Now, this is where we shift green for those of you who know 
uh, the, the color personalities, greens are like the engineer minded, the details, right? We're getting into the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts. This is where we roll up our sleeves and we start auditing the situation that they're in currently. Um, we're getting a little bit more analytical here uh, and we're going to be asking questions. Uh, do not uh, reiterate questions that you've already asked, especially if you could tell that you're talking to a fairly analytical person, they'll get a little irritated because they've already answered and typed out you know, the answers to that question. All right, so ask these. If you haven't gotten the responses, this would also be a great time to pull up your notes from what they have given you already and say, okay, so I see that you are here, right? Is that correct? Just confirm the things that they filled out on the form previously, right? But then you want to get into more questions, right? So some of these, this is digging deeper beyond what they filled out on the form. So um, how would you like for this thing to be different a month from now, a year from now, 90 days from now? What would make you really happy, right? What do you want having that thing to do for you? The why, get the why. Um, what do you imagine would be different about your life? Tell me more and tell me more some more, right? Um, what will you be able to do? What's the implication? 30 days, 90 days, further out from here, if you finally get past this place where you feel like you're stuck, which is why you're talking to me right now, right? If you finally get past that, what does life look like for you? Tell me more, tell me more. Okay, now we wanna get really direct here and ask specific questions about the outcomes they're looking at. So if you're a business coach, if you work with businesses, how much money do you wanna make a year from now? If this is a wellness metric, right? If you work with people on weight loss, how, like, what is the ideal weight and when do you wanna see that happen? So get into the key metric and ask a very pointed question. What is the goal? Because this is gonna be the thing that they wanna get from working with you, right? And you wanna make sure that that's abundantly clear. Um, if that's not clear, it's not going to be easy for them to say yes to a dollar figure at the end of the call. They need to be able to tie that investment into getting this thing done right here. Okay. Then we get into the nitty gritty, right? So you've been trying to figure this out. What's been the biggest challenge with getting that figured out on your own? What's been the hardest part of it? Right. So, um, you know, how much did like, what did this look like last year? If the metric is money, how much money was it? Um, reference uh, the plan that we talked about in our sunny section. Right. So we just need to get this and that going so that you can hit that goal. So let's let's make a plan so we can make that happen. Then we're going to address their current situation against the, the like the main phases of your program. Now, if you don't know what this means, you are going to see in the first module of the client funnel challenge how you can break apart. Uh, the phases of your program so that you can really paint it like a journey to your ideal person so that they can know, because, you know, you may have clever ways of looking at what your, uh, your offering is, but we need to communicate them in such a way that your person gets it and the buy-in is easy. So we're, we're going to basically say, okay, um, here's where you're at right now. Uh, so this is, this is what we need to be working on, right? What you work on in phase one of your program, right? Uh, and then here's the next thing that we're going to want to look at, right? So tell me more about that, right? So basically what you're doing is you are um, using your perennial program framework as, uh, as a framework here. So uh, if you're, let's just say as an example, you're a wellness coach and your phase one is clearing everything out. Your phase two is, um, is reducing inflammation and your phase three is building everything back up uh, with supplementation and getting things up to a normal working order. Then what you're going to say is, um, you know, the first pain point topic is going to be, um, you know, tell me what you're doing right now. Um, you know, tell me what you're eating right now or what your diet looks like right now or what supplements you're taking right now. Um, and so they tell you and you ask them these questions and you keep digging and then you're able to say, all right, so what, what we're going to do, and this is our game plan, right? This is why we call in our, our perennial program structure, because what we're ultimately going to offer them is our offer, right? So our game plan is going to define that. So what we'll say is after we ask all of these questions that pertain to these different phases and the kind of things that we'll be doing together is we say, all right, so here's what I see, you know we could, we could work on this. And then, you know, here's the next thing that needs to be addressed. And then finally, we'll be able to do this. Right. All right. And then finally what we're doing, and, and you could also, by the way, if you have client case studies, this is where we introduce this, right? So we can say, I actually had a client who was in a similar situation and they did this, this, and this perennial program, one, two, three. 
And now they are at this outcome, right? So that'd be a great place to put this. And then you paint the possibility. Uh, for those of you who were on our Get Oiling training earlier today, this is that targeted question. You know, what if, what if you could get this done, right? This is our transitioning point here. What if you could? What if, what if, what if we could actually make this easy? What would it feel like? Now, this is the critical piece. A lot of us try to dig into this too fast. This is the pain. The red is the pain. This is the ouch stuff, right? This is the stuff that they've been frustrated with. We don't, the reason why we don't open up the frustration at the beginning of the call is that we don't want to set the tone of the whole call that everything is awful and it sucks and it's difficult and everything is an uphill climb, right? We want to start at the, at the top of the sunny hillside, right? And, and we're going to work through the details and we do need to get down here into the icky stuff that's sticky and hard, right? So that's where we go next, right? So wouldn't it feel great if we could do that? I, I know somebody, I know somebody who's followed these steps. I've helped somebody through this. What would it be like if you had that? All right, now let's talk about what's keeping you from that. What have you been trying? Tell me what's not working. Um, obviously skip things that are redundant because that's just gonna feel like, um, it's just gonna feel like you're poking at a wound. Don't do that, but ask questions. Where do you feel most stuck? What's preventing you from feeling the way you wanna feel right now? What do you feel isn't working? How do you feel about that? That sounds really frustrating. Like, what is that doing for you? And then get into what have you tried? We need to acknowledge that they have been working to try to figure something out. They're not going to be on a call with you like this if they haven't been trying on their own. So listen really closely here. What have you tried? Have you invested in solutions before? Make note of this stuff, right? Listen closely. How do you feel about that? How much time have you spent on that? How much money have you spent on that? What are you getting from this thing that you're pouring these resources into? How do you feel about it? Remember, this is an emotional thing. All, selling is emotional, you guys. This has to be an emotional connection and you have to really be attuned to the emotions here. And then how is this affecting you? Are there other places this is impacting you? And then what's going to happen if you don't figure it out? This is the deepest depth of the conversation here. What happens if we don't get this figured out? Do you see the arc that we followed here, right? We're top of the hill, looking out on the horizon, trying to get to this hill over here. And we're just like, we've, they've been down here. We're down here with them. We're listening to where they are. They know that we know the way, right? They know that we've worked with people to help them get to that other side, to build a bridge across this gulf. But we need to be where they are, right? We need to listen. Um, so ask these questions, get really clear because... For, for anyone who has ever struggled with, um, with, with, uh, with charging what you're worth or with getting a yes or closing the deal on, high, on higher ticket offerings, right? This is a really critical piece, right? If somebody knows the cost of not figuring it out and the solution is sitting right in front of them, I mean, it's kind of logical that they say yes to the option that's right there. If you have that connection, if they feel seen, if they feel heard and they trust that you'll continue to see and hear and help them, right? That makes sense? Show of hands, is that you with me? All right, we are getting through this, you guys. Now we're shifting back, right? We, we just, we hit the depth of it. Let's get back up to the sunny hillside here. What do you imagine things would be like if you started to see this thing happening? Right. Because we just we ask them to just get out all of the icky, this stucks. Like I'm I'm stuck here. I don't like this. Well, what would it feel like? Right. What do you imagine things would be like if we got you, you know, on a if we got you on a regimen where you actually started having energy every morning when you wake up and you have enough energy to go work out? right? Or what would it feel like if you got 10 new leads a week and you were consistently signing up a new customer twice or three times a month, depending on what you offer, right? Um, let them say what that would mean to them, right? Then this is important. Weave in your client story, right? So this, this is another great place. If you guys have case studies uh, from your clients, this is a great place to put them. Uh, so start by asking first, 
have they invested previously, right? So the, you can weave that in here, actually. This is a, a section unto itself, right? So if you have a client story that, that mimics what they're talking about, that's a really great place to keep them in this imagined sp space emotionally. Then we're getting back into our green. So let's figure out what they have done before. This is, if they've invested in coaching previously, this is an important space. Uh, and don't be afraid to step here uh, because this is an important question to ask uh, again, especially if you're newer at offering coaching, um, you want to get the, you know, the, the elephant out of the room here, right? So address it. Have you invested before, right? What are your trepidations about investing this time? What didn't work before? What did you love about what you experienced before? Um, you'll also know here from the things that they say, whether or not you actually want to have this person as a client, because sometimes people will reveal themselves here. You know, they'll reveal that maybe they're kind of operating with expectations that don't really exist inside of the scope of what you do, right? And this is a great place uh, to, to kind of have that felt out. All right, so ask this question. And then um, if they invested previously and they aren't happy about it, there's definitely some questions here you can cover. I'm sorry to hear about that. Tell me more about it, right? Tell me what, what do you feel didn't work for you? Another great question as you're evaluating whether to work together on this, what would you need to know so you feel confident that that experience isn't created again, right? And what are you looking for that's different if you were to invest in yourself again? Now let's turn the sunshine back on. Let's make this happen. So for you to get this outcome that we've covered, we're going to hit these key th these key metrics, of course, going along with your perennial program's main points as they pertain to the metrics your person's looking for, then do the math. Calculate the big picture outcome that they want. Is it that we're going to address their sleep and we're going to address their stress so that they can get back into working out and finally start uh, having the energy to lift weights and get the body that they want? And you believe that's something that we can get a really good handle on in six months? Awesome. So do the math. If you if this is a business proposition, um, then basically, you know, here's um, here's the thing we're going to get done first. You know, if, if we do that and then we do that, then you could have this many clients if you know how much they're charging. This is an important one for those of you who are business. Uh, if you're selling business coaching, helping them get new clients, know what the value of client is when you're doing in the green section up at the very top of this, know what the value of their client is over time so that you can do the math and say, so if we get you this many clients, that's this much money. If we could do that and then double that over 90 days, how would that make you feel? That's this much money. That would be pretty cool, right? How does that feel? This is an important section. For those of you blue personalities, and yes, I'm talking to myself, please don't skip this. This is a very, very important thing to do uh, because you are actually helping them to see their future by saying, this is you in this new body. This is your business bringing in this much money a month, right? All right, now the shift, the big shift. If I were to wave a magic wand and in an instant, you could have things in your business and life look exactly like you want them to. Tell me what that would look like. Don't say business and life, pick the one that you work on <laughs> uh, and then let them tell you, then ask, well, what's the best part about that? What are you most looking forward to? Acknowledge them, tell them how amazing that is. Be excited for them and then ask them, so what needs to change? in order for that to happen for you. And what they're usually going to do here is more or less repeat back the plan that you guys just figured out together, right? So then we're asking why that's important to them right now to get this figured out. This is where we start moving into our offer, you guys. We are casting our bright sunshiny vision. I am excited for you. You have these strengths and you have these things going on for you and you could be getting three new clients a week. You could be waking up with that energy and dropping those dress sizes or whatever it is that you're offering. Spell it out here in the words that they've already given you on this call. But what's missing right now is step one, step two, step three. We've talked about these things already, right? And so we really just need a breakthrough around the thing they're struggling with the most, a system for getting the thing that they want, a plan to get it done. So this is what I see for you. The first step is talk about the first step of your program. The second step is talk about the second step of your program. Now note, as I'm talking about this here, and you'll read this on the page, in context, 
in context. So we don't say in my program in step one, we blah, 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 blah. No, this is you telling them what you together need to do together first. So the first thing that we need to do, if, if you're a wellness coach, the first thing that we need to do is really get a baseline on where things are at for you so that we can be really clear on the steps that you can follow every day so that this is not stressful and you've got a clear and easy path forward. And then we're going to want to take an inventory of what you have in your kitchen or, you know, whatever that is, right? So we're not, we're not selling our program. We are, we're holding their hand and we're walking them through the map of their journey with us. Does that make sense? Right? We have a client story wherever it is applicable, especially to these, um, these specific steps and phases. If you guys did the uh, attractable pipeline igniter, I show you how to get those. Uh, all of these stories to weave in here uh, in that course. All right, so then we, of course, weave in your client story. They make a lot of sense to weave in throughout this and then get their buy-in, right? So we've, we've just said, here's the plan. This is what I see for you. We'll do this, then we'll do this, then we'll do that. And then we'll have this thing. There's the promised land. How's that resonating with you? How do you feel about that as a plan for you? What do you like the most out of what I just shared with you? And what do you need? And how do you feel like I can help you the most in moving forward? Anything else you want to share? What's the number one outcome you'd like to see by the end of 90 days, six months, however long your program is, um, if I were to help you with this? And what would be a good measure of success for you? How would that feel? And as they share this with you, summarize it back to them, right? So after they've shared this with you positively, if you decide that you are going to offer what you're offering, they had, they're a fit, you feel good about this, they feel good about it. Now we say, here, if that's the case, here's what I feel would help you the most. Then you describe the experience of your perennial program. Now you can use all of your clever keywords and call it your this and your that and all of that kind of stuff. Up until this point, we are translating their language. Now they have said, yeah, you seem to have the answer I want. Now you get to talk all about your thing, okay? Now is the time. So here's the experience. It's a 90 day intensive. It's one-on-one -on -one weekly accountability, whatever that is. And I will work with you step-by-step -step through the system that my clients are using to get the result they want. Then you map it out. It's a, this, it's a week of this, it's six weeks of that, it's daily this, it's whatever that, all that kind of stuff, right? And then questions. How are you feeling about this as a fit for yourself? How do you see this helping you? Do you have any questions as you consider whether this is a fit for you? Now, sometimes people will pop in and say, okay, well, how much is it? Then you say, if they ask, like, if they ask, I'm happy to share that with you, but first I want to make sure this is a good fit for you. How are you feeling about the fit for yourself? If they're like, yeah, no, I think this is great. Like, I, where do I sign? Then you say, okay, in that case, I would love to work with you. Let's get this, these outcomes that we've talked about. And then you say, this is the investment. Pause. <laughs> Is it your, your nervousness will absolutely get the better of you here if you don't have a plan to pause. Say the figure, stop. Because what we often do is put our foot in our mouth after we say how much it is. Don't do that. So pause. And then you say, I've noticed that clients of mine who get the best results know that they want to run with this and resonate with me. Uh, and they want to get the ball rolling quickly. So I like to honor that by giving savings of blank, whatever percent figure, if you prefer to pay in full, we could also break this up into payments. If that's easier for you to do this, which one would you prefer? After I get you enrolled, we'll book your first session. What card would you prefer to use today? That's it. That is literally it. That's the whole thing, you guys. So that is uh, free, <laughs> free for you to grab, use, modify, uh, inside of the client funnel challenge that is attractwell.com forward slash CFC. And you can take that, modify it to your own program. And of course, if you're following the client funnel challenge, you'll see the ways that you can break out the currencies of the different steps of your program, how you talk about what it is that you do so that, you know, you can facilitate these conversations. Uh, and of course, how you can turn that into great copy uh, for your website and your marketing. All right. So uh, if you guys have questions, I invite you to please ask. Uh, Monique asked, um, or Camille, uh, if you don't have clients yet, then you start having these discovery calls, right? So last week we talked about creating the discovery call funnel and sort of what that looks like and what it entails and how to position 
that discovery call as something that would be of great value to an ideal client. So um, Camille, uh, if, if you wanna kind of back and forth here, maybe let me know, we can chat here real quick live, or if you wanna just tell me um, who your ideal client is and what it is that you're offering, uh, we can talk about how yours is positioned and, and maybe some ideas as to how you would, um, how you would position that as an offer inside of a discovery call. Let me know. And by the way, uh, we are back next week, which is also next year, uh, with a training uh, that'll have Greg helping to help us make sense of push notifications in the new Attractwell app, which is super, super exciting. Are y'all shy today? <laughs> are y'all, who is like, who's logging into the, uh, into the, the client funnel challenge right now. Like, where do I find this? This is so much. I just need to go read it and then maybe read it 20 more times. <laughs> All right. So um, if you guys, um, I don't know. There we go. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. Well, if any of you uh, would like any help with uh, kind of contextualizing this, we are here uh, for the close of the hour. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we'll get to work uh, and, and depart. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, got you, Cheryl. It is attract well, attractwell.com forward slash CFC. So, um, or F, F, I'm not good with sign language. Uh, sorry, it's, it's CFC. Um, there we go. It is in the chat. Uh, that will take you to the client funnel challenge. And here, let me show you the page that you should see when it comes up. I'm taking a while here, it looks like. Uh, but what you'll ultimately be able to get access to is this course right here. And you'll find it in the bottom. There we go. Yeah, so it's right here. Voila, you get access to the challenge right there. Awesome. Glad you could get it. Um, what else? Anybody have questions? Does anybody have uh, something that you're working on this week that you want feedback on? We're certainly here to help with that as well. Um, also super curious, maybe just a quick show of hands. Um, do you have an offer, right? Do you feel like you have an offer that you could plug into a call like this? Or would it be helpful for you to maybe have a training on crafting an offer? What would that look like? We do have a course, uh, a course course, uh, like so how to actually build and, set and put together an online course. Uh, but that's not really necessarily something that's going to tell you how to conceptually come up with a thing that you offer for sale. Uh, let me see. The technical setup for the funnel, Cheryl, is actually going to be in the client funnel challenge. So we actually walk through all of the elements of the funnel and we give you specific pages that you can take and plug into your Attractwell account uh, and modify it to your liking. Um, Let's see. Okay, thank you for what you do. Just completed the Build Your Online Course content. Awesome. Heather created a course and her sister and Heather are launching it next week. We plan to use it as a funnel for health coaching. So this discovery call content is timely. Awesome. So definitely since you have a course now and you have it all laid out, you know what you're offering, use the client funnel challenge to help you see how you can, um, What's the best way to, you could add some like modularity to how you talk about the concepts so that you can plug them into your discovery calls or onto your sales pages, into your marketing and that kind of thing. Um, I think, and I, I haven't quite come up with like how my brain does this because I, well, I'm, I'm a naturally very blue creative person and I don't think in blocks and structures and green things. That's not how I usually work. Uh, but a lot of what the training does uh, that, that I've provided to you guys, especially for like the client funnel challenge uh, is, is to sort of um, create little building blocks out of the concepts that create your program so that you can plug those into different places, really building modularity uh, into how you approach your business uh, at a concept level. Um, so the technical setup is in the client funnel challenge. Allison says, I have it on my phone and on the app, but what about getting it on Safari? I click the link and don't need to get on the list again. So um, actually what you can do is you can go to our member area. Greg, is it, did, did we ever shortcut that link? Is it attractwell.com slash members or do we need to be blog.attractwell.com slash members? You know what? I don't remember offhand, but I can certainly uh, try it out here. Yeah, it's not forwarding. I'll have to set that up here. Okay, 
So right now it's blog, like you have a blog, dot attractwell.com forward slash members, but uh, probably very soon because Greg is really good at this. We could just have attractwell.com forward slash members and Allison, that's where you can go to log in. You could uh, reset your password uh, if you need to, to get access. All right. Uh, considering I'm a complete novice with your platform in the process of creating a website, please forgive my basic questions. These are, that's fine. That's what we're here for. Uh, number one, uh, cost to have you help me with my website recommending changes. Uh, so to answer that number one, uh, and you have uh, Monique Camille, and I don't know if that's a, like your whole name or if I use one of them, but hello. Uh, the answer to question number one is we do that every week for free uh, here at two o'clock. Uh, Eastern time. So if you go to attractwell.com forward slash uh, work review, attractwell.com forward slash work review, all one word, uh, you can set up a dedicated time. You can give me the information ahead of time. And on a call like the one that we're on today, I can look at your website, walk you through all of the recommendations. And if you can't even, if you can't be here live, you can ask those questions, give me the links and you can check it out, uh, check out the review in the recording. Uh, if you want work done for you, we do have VA services. So definitely just reach out to support if you'd like to have something done for you, or if you'd like to just hire someone to hold your hand as you're doing some of this stuff outside of what we're doing on these live calls that I host, uh, definitely please reach out to us. We do have an amazing and capable team uh, that can help you if you need one-on-one -on -one help. Uh, okay, I need help linking menu items to relevant pages. Okay, okay. Uh, can I also ask you to look at what I'm doing on my website and to comment, make yes, I can do that. Uh huh. Uh, uh, using that, that live work review. I've not received confirmation of my domain and email addresses. Can email addresses provided be used as a formal email address on my website? Or do I have to use the Gmail addresses and do those messages go to messages on the platform? Okay, so um, through our uh, support, so support at attractwell.com or get oiling if you have get oiling, um, they can show you how to set up your domain. Now we can also set you up with your own email address, or if you have that set up from somewhere else, then that's something that you could use as well. That's going to be in your contact information settings uh, on your site. Um, and so no, we actually don't recommend that you use Gmail uh, to email people. You're not going to get as good a delivery rate. Um, so you're going to do a lot better. You'll be better off if you have your own you know, your name or hello or something like that at your website.com. Uh, and if you need help from us for that, then definitely reach out, send a message to support at attractwell.com. Okay, the domain. Also, what email address do you want with this domain? You can choose something like info at, instructor at. Okay, um, yeah, so that's, that's completely up to you. And if you're having our team set it up, then you just let us know uh, what you wanna use. Uh, if it is, it sounds like it's not gonna be your name, it's a, a training. Uh, company. So instructor at is great. I think that's an interesting suggestion. Um, info at hello at there's no wrong answer here. It's just, you know, how would you prefer to be called? Um, the emails that are sent to you, right? So if somebody you send emails out from your system, those emails will be received in an inbox wherever you choose to set it up. So think about it like this, like if you uh, go to work for a company and you get a company email address, uh, this will be your company email address that could be put onto your phone, onto, yeah, it could be forwarded into your Gmail, it could be set up on your app, um, your uh, email software like Outlook or Apple Mail, uh, depending on, on what you use on your devices. Um, so you would receive those in your own inbox, so they're not inside of our system, you send from our system, and you can get all of the metrics, right, who opened what, who clicked what, all that kind of stuff. All right, and then creating a quiz on this platform uh, is essentially the same uh, as creating a form, like the discovery call uh, funnel that, that we talked about last week. Um, but it's not exactly the same as a quiz, right? So you're not testing people on their knowledge. It really, it's working more like an intake form. Uh, and we don't currently, this is definitely on our radar, we don't currently have a uh, sort of data focused or data, um, mm, I don't have my right word for this today. Uh, we, we don't have this set up like a formal survey site or, or a formal quiz site. So there are ways you can use it, uh, but there may be instances like if you are using, um, if you're using say your member area, for instance, to test people on concepts, you could perhaps do something like that. 
I don't know if Google Forms does that or not, uh, but there are, uh, you know, maybe some services that you could plug in, but we don't have a way to do quizzes and grade quizzes exactly here. I will say this one thing though. Um, we have a feature inside of online classes inside of our platforms where you can require and uh, where you can require homework submission. So this is what I do. I don't quiz people on stuff, but I do need people to complete a thing before they can proceed to the next step in working with me. So I create a fillable PDF and they download it from the download section. They must fill it out and upload it to that to a section on that page in order to proceed to the next lesson. You also have the ability to require instructor approval. So you'll get an email that so-and-so is ready for the next lesson and they've submitted work. You can click a link right there because the system will send you the email and tell you. You click the link in your email, you open up the PDF that they filled out, you read through it. Are they ready to proceed or not? If they are, approve them and they can move ahead to the next one. So it's not a measurement, it's not a means of measurement, uh, but it is a way for you to have more of that active role in, uh, in giving them feedback. And, um, and I do wanna make sure, um, please do um, you know, fill out, uh, like next week, we absolutely have space for this. Um, you can uh, go to attractwell.com forward slash work review, one word, uh, and, uh, and, and we can have dedicated space to sit down together and go through all of this. And we can even get into your system and move things around and I can make recommendations and all that kind of stuff. Happy, happy to do that. Um, okay, a link to building a vault. Um, okay, so Jennifer, to build a vault, you could use multiple things <laughs> to, uh, uh, you have multiple reasons to build a vault. Uh, we have an online course, uh, course, how to build your online course. I don't know if we have a short link for that, Greg. <laughs> I don't remember the, the okay. landing page for that. But if, if we can find that, uh, we'll pop that over to you. It does walk you through creating an online course that does entail uh, building a vault because the vault is where online courses Go. So people pay for vaults, like if you're going to have a course. So we could definitely let you know about that. Uh, Cornelia, hello. Is the discovery call funnel part of the client funnel challenge? Have I understood that right? Yes, it is. Um, so the client funnel challenge uh, is it's a client getting funnel. So having a way to book with you is built into the funnel. If you would like to have your form with which they sign up to get on a call with you, um, go into those greater detailed questions like I talked about last week, uh, then you're basically turning uh, your authority page, right? Your the, the page that they land on after they opt in for your freebie into a, here's how you can apply for a call with me, go apply, right? Uh, so yes, uh, yes, this fits into that perfectly. Is it worthwhile to do the client funnel challenge without having a course first? Yes, uh, because uh, the client funnel challenge is uh, something that was originally designed for coaches. Uh, so this is really like, you don't need to have a course, like a deliverable, all tech build out course to do it. No, if you know the journey that you work your clients through, uh, that you work with your clients on, then you've got what you need. Uh, and, and it will walk you through how you contextualize how you work with people, how you talk about it, so that you can really position it like a thing that you would position it as if it was a course. So, so you can definitely, and I would say definitely do that first, unless you, if your primary goal is to have a course, then do the course course first. Uh, but if you don't have one and you don't know what you would do with a course yet, then do the client funnel challenge. You don't need to have a prerequisite for that at all. Uh, okay, Melissa, I've created a course, just learning how to do it, but I'm in the process of creating more that are in line with my business. That's exciting. Uh, you definitely don't have to have a course. Uh, okay, Cheryl says, my offer is ability to change. My ultimate service is hypnotherapy. I have a full package for hypno. That's fabulous. So be thinking about um, the outcomes. It's the outcomes of hypnotherapy, right? So uh, definitely go through the client funnel challenge because you're going to see how you can take the outcome of working with you and really kind of frame it uh, as a whole, as a program, right? Like it's the program of working with me entails all of these things. You go from here to here. We outline the journey for our person. Uh, and then of course, we're offering them to hold hands and walk uh, to uh, walk along the path for that journey uh, from that discovery call. All right, uh, do, do, do I have a lead generator and a coaching offering, but no course yet. Cool, cool. My green, red, blue sides fight. <laughs> I'm a blend, but not much yellow. Cool, uh, awesome. 
There we go. Okay, so Greg's got some links here in the chat. I'm just going through the chat because there's really not a lot in Q&A. Uh, Joel says, I missed the first few minutes. Are you doing a website review today? Nope, <laughs> nobody signed up for one, uh, but you can definitely sign up for one in the future at attractwell.com forward slash work review. Okay, so for the non-weekly work, noon weekly work session, can we work on our vault, just not on our website? Um, Allison, you can take any work that you're doing on your site, you can bring to this call or the one that we have for Get Oiling. Uh, if you sign up for it in advance, that's your time, uh, and we can work on that together. So it's there's really, there's there's no wrong answer there, so long as, as you're doing work and you want some eyes on it. All right, and Greg did put the online course in here, thank you. Um, cool, cool. All right, yeah, so you guys definitely take advantage of trackwell.com forward slash CFC. You will find this discovery call flow in uh, the final module there. Uh, okay, in terms of organizing resources, is there any advantage to organizing it as a course versus a page? Hmm. Well, Joel, this, um, it really depends on what it is that we're talking about here. Um, they're wildly different because a course is something that typically you're going to want to have, you know, somebody pay for because it takes quite a bit more work to build out a course than it does to build a page. I mean, you could put a lot of time into a really complicated page, but, um, but uh, you know, a course uh, as it's set up is something that you could really you could charge for. Um, and also uh, for the integrity of your business, if you are charging for something, I definitely recommend putting it inside of a vault uh, because people have to log in to see it. Uh, one can't simply share a page from a website, which, I mean, if you have a URL to a page, most of the time you can share that page with anybody. But if that's behind a paywall and you have to log in to get it, then your, your content is more secure. So um, if, if you're selling it, put it in a course. Uh, if it is a step-by-step -step thing, put it in a course. Um, if it is... I mean, you can't have pages that are long, right? Uh, you know, guides to do a thing and it's all one topic, but if it gets complicated, um, it, yeah, just, it really depends. Can you tell me like here in the next couple of minutes here before we go, can you, if you can give me just a little bit more context, Joel, I'd be happy to maybe give you a better answer to that. Um, you can see, uh, Allison's thinking of organizing. Is it more beneficial to put resources on the website uh, versus a page in the vault, then thinking about vault being opened or password. Uh, that again, uh, for you as well, Allison, it's going to depend on what the resource is. If it's meant for public consumption, then it is going to be best put on a page. Uh, if it's meant for clients, right, or for customers, then that's something that should live inside of, of a private space. Like imagine even if your business is like if you're a network marketer and you're not selling services, you're actually, um, you, you are a conduit or a brand partner for product. Uh, the paywall is them buying your network marketing product in the same way that a coach would have a paywall to get their videos or their, you know, links to book with them and that kind of thing. So keep the high value stuff that should be beyond the velvet rope in your member area in the vaults uh, and the things that are for the people who need to know that they need to get behind the velvet rope, put that on pages. Uh, Monique, a vault is, um, a vault is, well, actually when you log in and you get access to uh, the client funnel challenge, that is inside of a vault in Attractwell. So a vault is a container that can hold online classes uh, and pages and things like that. You can sell vaults, you can give exclusive access to vaults. Uh, I think of it, it, it's like a member area, except you can have lots of things in it. Um, multiple things, different topics, experience for experiences for different levels, that kind of thing. Um, we, I don't think we have a lot of dedicated training on a track wall that talks about that. So we should, um, we should do more of that. I like this idea. Okay. Um, Joel's asking basically a sequence to follow for a new member, for example. Yeah. So if somebody has signed on the dotted line to work with you in whichever way they do, uh, then I would absolutely have your step two after taking payment. And this could all be one step. If you take the payment at the vault level uh, or on a page that adds them to a vault, have, uh, you know, your client onboarding for success include you showing them getting into the vault and walking through it and get using the things that are inside of it, because you can take payment that way. Um, the other way that you could do this, if you wanted to keep things simpler, uh, is you take payment on a page and then the email campaign that goes out uh, is the one that maybe gives the link to book with you and you're guiding the experience more manually from there. It just depends on, on what you are looking for. 
both page and a course slash sequence would be in a member vault. Yes, you would put a page, you can put pages and online courses, a step-by-step -step type stuff inside of a vault in your member area. Um, Allison asks, uh, so would it not be good to put pages from the site also in the vault? I was playing around with it and added my seven reasons to ditch candles page to my vault, but maybe it shouldn't be there and on my website. That's going to be something that's better for leads. Uh, so I would keep that on the website. You could certainly link to it from inside of your vault, no problem. Um, but if you have something that that could serve a purpose in both places, I guess you could do it. Uh, if you know the page is integral to the vault experience um, that someone paid for or is getting access to. But I don't. I think in most cases that's the case. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just link to a page. Um, I'll often see in paid vaults, uh, I will see people who will link to a blog post that they wrote, right? That doesn't need to be inside the vault. It, there's just a link inside the vault. So if we say, hey, I wrote a little bit more about this that goes, you know, it goes over here. Um, linking to a page, that would just be like literally on a page, right? So, or in the vault, anywhere there's the editor where text is going to be showing up on the page inside of your vault, you can hype, you can um, highlight that text and add a link to it like you've seen in our other trainings. So, um, so for instance, in the like about this vault section, I think is what it is, you know, the thing where it shows up at the top, um, you know, you can say, you can learn more about this topic if you read the blog or if you have a page inside of your vault that talks about additional resources in the same place that you might link to affiliate products or other products. You could also say here are some blog posts you might want to read. Here are some more pages you might want to read, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do that. There's, there's not a wrong answer here, uh, unless you're, you know, maybe on a basic plan and working with limited pages, in which case, please don't duplicate something you could just point to because you could use that page in your account for something with, um, you know, something that would bring a little bit more value to your business. So um, there's not harm in doing it, uh, certainly. But, um, but now you have two pages that are essentially the same when you could just link to the one that you have, but it's it's not a huge deal. You're not going to break anything if you do that. <laughs> it'll it'll be fine, uh, but uh, but don't don't worry about. Um, you don't need to put every single thing inside of the vault, right? If you're talking about something else, there's no harm in linking something that goes somewhere else. Right. So for instance, Allison, I know that you are a Young Living brand partner. Um, when you link uh, to a product that goes to the Young Living site from in your vault, that's that's totally fine, right? Because we want them to go from the vault to go purchase product because they're learning about those products in the vault, right? So that's totally fine. If your client is in your vault and you're a coach and you wrote a blog post about why they need to cut gluten out of their diet, then instead of like reinventing the wheel and repeating all of your work and trying to format a bunch of stuff, just get a link to the blog post about gluten and just say, here's my recommended reading list, right? Um, let's see. So uh, Monique, in your Attract Well account when you're logged in, there is a little question mark here. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to show you this real quick and then we're going to get going. Um, here we go. So right here, this little guy, right? This is the help center. Click this little guy, go to help. And we type in the word menu, setting up your site menu. This is where we're going, OK? Uh, and this, and actually, if you click this little guy right here, it's the whole article. And I'm going to copy this and paste it into our chat right now, just so you can see this um, right away without having to search. But just for future reference, all you have to do is type into this little guy here that pops up when you click the question mark. And a lot of uh, like just simple functions inside uh, of your system are going to be here. So like vaults, for instance, if we type vault, um, you're going to see vault setup, um, you know, using it, adding people to it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this, um, this will actually walk you through setting up your menu. So you can add um, a menu header or items to your menu, and it gives you all of these different options here. So it's a pretty full article on how to do that. Okay, thank you guys for all of your excellent questions. I hope that you do uh, sign up for a live work review so we can get into your work together uh, and and really you know make an opportunity or take an opportunity uh, to actually uh, close some gaps and get you moving ahead quickly into the new year. We are really grateful that you guys are all part of this community and we're excited to move into another year with you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on the flip side. See you next year. We'll be back same time next week.